when he gets to hell, 60 degrees of hotness. It's his portion. This one, he'll have more than 60%. 80%, 90%, 100%. This man will suffer because he knew the truth before. He was saved before. He was a child of God before. He, he believed in holiness before. But because the flesh will not allow him to stay. He didn't stay. Look at it now. He's going to have a greater degree of punishment in hell. Verse 20 again. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through, uh, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein. You will not be entangled. I said you will not be entangled. The Lord will keep you to the end. You'll bear fruit. You'll bring glory to God. But for those who are not careful, for those who are not prayerful, for those who do not remain in the Lord, if they're again entangled therein, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known, after they have known, they are not ignorant, they have known each to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the soul the swine, the pig that was washed to a wallowing in the mire. That will not be you. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, whosoever was not found written in the book of life, who is that? Judas Iscariot. He was there before, but no more there. Who is that? Demas. He was there before, he's no more there. Who is that? Those children of Israel that sinned against the Lord. He that sins against me, he will I blot out his name out of the book that I've written. Who is that? Those people that followed the Lord before, but because they had some hard stuff, hard knowledge, hard saying, hard teaching. They say, who can abide this? Who can hear this? And they went away. The name's no more there. I pray your name will remain there. In the book of life. That wonderful book that God writes. And he puts the names of those who are saved. And then, as so I'm walking with the Lord every day, by grace, temptation comes, say, God, help me, I'm not strong. Trials come, help me, Lord, I need your help. And troubles come, oh, Lord, these will not drive me away from the Lord. I'll stay with the Lord. And day by day, he keeps on helping you. And the more your days are, the greater the grace of God and the strength of God in your life. Your name will remain in the book of life. But it says those who become so prayerless and careless and they walk away from the Lord, a branch that will not abide in the vine. Whosoever was not found, reaching the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. Chapter 21, verse 8, Revelation. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. But the fearful, they're so much afraid. They know they ought to serve God. What my, will my husband say? They know they ought to serve God. What will my wife say? They know they ought to serve God. But, you know, our peer group, my age mate in the secondary school, they make fun of those who follow the way of the Lord according to the word of God. They are fearful. They cannot take a stand. And they're so fearful that they will surrender their soul into the hands of some people that are not serious with God. I pray that you'll not be so fearful of anybody who surrender your salvation or surrender your soul into the hand of anyone. You'll be bold and courageous. Your soul, that's the greatest thing you have. Let me ask you, if somebody wanted to take your car, will you just fold your hand and say, well, I don't want to struggle, I don't want to fight. I'm a gentle person. He wants to take my car. Okay, that's yours. Do you do that? Your soul is greater than your car. If somebody wants to take your wife, here is your wife, and you know, you're going together. And then this, this other stranger came and is trying to make some kind of advances to your wife. You say, well, these people of the world are so terrible. And I don't want them to hurt me or fight with me or kill me. Uh, woman, if their pull is so strong on you, what decide? And then you see your wife going away with that stranger. 
Are you alright with that? Your soul is greater than your, than your wife. Your soul. You don't want to surrender your soul, surrender your salvation into the hands of anyone and then you become so fearful. What will they do? Let them do what they will do. This is your soul. Keep it. And keep your salvation. You don't want to be so fearful of people. What they will say. What they will do. How they will act. And then you cannot keep this holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You will not be fearful to that point. If they will take your life, let them take it. This salvation we will keep it. Because the soul is greater than our life. Our salvation is greater than our life. And if there's anything that is left, that salvation, that soul will keep it to the very end. Don't ever be fearful. Don't ever be a coward. Watch over your soul, your salvation. Don't let anyone, anybody touch that. It says, but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and all mongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and with brimstone, which is the second death. God will keep you faithful to the end. We're here to be a fruit. We're going to be a fruit. Everybody, brother, sister, children, young people, we're going to be a fruit. I need a greater amen. The grace of God is available. The grace available to Enoch, that's available for you and for me. The grace of God available for Samuel, for David, for Peter, for Paul, for John, for all those people. God is still the same. He says, I am God. I change not. Listen, there is no temptation that comes to you today that didn't come to somebody in the past. And God gave them the victory. God will give you the victory. There is no challenge. There is no pressure that is coming to you today. Either at home, in your place of work, in your tribe, in your family, anywhere. No challenge that is coming to you today that has not come to people in the past. And those people of the past, when those challenges came to them, they stood. And it says, God says, I am God, I change not. And Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And because he changes not, Grace is still available. So, supernatural strength is still available. This huge, you will stand. You know, I'm thinking about Enoch now. Enoch walked with the Lord how many years? Tell me. If you know it and you are confident, how many years? 300 years. Now, if somebody stayed with the Lord 300 years without backsliding, can't you stay for one year? One year? You have the same God as Enoch? You have that same strength as Enoch. You have the same promises given unto you as Enoch. And you have the same possibility. And the world was worse at that time than today. The world was very bad at that time. And for 300 years, day after day, and week after week, and month after month, 300 years, he walked with the Lord without backsliding. Obviously, that same God can keep you for one year. That same God can keep you for 20 years. How old are you now? Are you 40 and you want to live until the age of 90? You have 50 years more. The same God that kept you up for 300 years, He will stay by you. He will never leave you. Each day at a time, each week at a time, one year, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, I'll see you in heaven. Because that grace is enough to keep us. That's why we're talking about the compensation now for bearing fruit through abiding fellowship. John, John chapter 15. John chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 7. If ye abide in me, and, and the Lord just said this in a very simple way. He says, look at that branch over there on that tree. That branch has been there through sunshine and rain and through the winds and the waves and through the flame and the flood and it blew yes sometimes the tree will bend this way and the tree will bend that way that tree may can try that the wind may try to bend you and it tr the wind may try to break you off but to say god help me god help me i want to abide in the vine you are going to abide in the vine and if you abide in me and my words abide in you well, that's how to abide just take that word Every time a trial comes, look back to the word and look at the appropriate word that will match that trial, match that temptation, match that challenge. 
my word abide in you, then it says, ye shall ask what she will. That's an open check. Ye shall ask what she will. And what do you want? And Jesus said, Jesus said, and it shall be done unto you. And it shall be done unto you. But uh, let us ask ourselves now, what do you want? You shall ask what you want. You shall ask what you will. And if you're looking at, you want to get to heaven at last, and then the Lord is saying, you shall ask what you will. And he says, come and ask me. You say, Lord, I want to get to heaven. I've heard about heaven. I want to see the face of Jesus Christ. What do you want? Uh, the wind is blowing and the waves are much, but I want to abide. And Jesus said, You shall ask what you want. You want what you ask what you will, it shall be done unto you. Yeah, what do you want? Lord, I don't want to fall. I don't want to be like Judas is carried. I don't want to be like Demas. That's what you want. He says, You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. What do you want? I want to be as stable as Enoch. That you walk with the last three hundred years and for the life, for the time that remains, Lord. This is what I will. This is what I want. I want to abide faithful unto the very end. Well, if that's what you want, it shall be done unto you. What do you want? I, I want the life of Paul the Apostle that says, In all these things, we're more than a conqueror. And Jesus said, If that is what you want, you shall ask what you will, it shall be done unto you. What do you want? I want to grow in grace. And in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, stable, that nothing will be able to shake or move me. And Jesus said, just abide in me. And let my words abide in you. And then he said, ye shall ask what she want, what she will, and it shall be done unto you. I think it's because we have been asking for some unimportant things. Not useless, not completely useless, on important things. What do I mean by that? It's like a man that is not having a good health, but instead of asking for health, he's asking for clothes. It's like a man that doesn't have, he has sores in the feet, and his feet cannot wear shoes. But instead of asking for God to touch his feet and make his feet strong and healthy, he's asking for shoes. It's like a person that is not asking, having appetite, he's sick. And instead of asking for appetite, he's asking for food that he cannot eat. Food is good, but is that what he needs at that time? Some people, they are not strong spiritually. Instead of asking for spiritual strength, abide this strength to be strong in the Lord. And to be able to withstand whatever temptation or trial may come their way, instead of asking for that, they are asking for healing. They are asking for deliverance. Healing is good, but if your soul is not stable, if your soul is not sound, if your soul is not strong, if you have healing, what are you going to have? What are you going to use the healing for? What you need first, first things first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then what's the rest? All these things shall be added unto you. It's the addition people are asking for us instead of asking for things that are very, very important. It says, abide in me. Let my words abide in you. After that now, ye shall ask what ye will. And then it shall be done unto you. By the way, do you remember the prayer of Solomon? He asked for one thing, just wisdom. To be able to live and to do what God wants him to do as a king over Israel. And God said, that thing you have asked so important, that pleases me. Everything you have not asked for, I will give unto you. If you will ask for the important thing, all the other things the Lord will add unto you in Jesus' name. And then in verse 8, in verse 8, Herein is my Father glorified. Anybody wanting to glorify God here today? With your life, with your language, with your friends, with your fellowship, with everything that you, everywhere you go. And you say, all I want to do, God, give me the grace and the strength to bring glory unto you. It says, herein is my Father glorified, that she bear what kind of fruit? Much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. The Lord has told us today the condition of how to glorify God. How to remain in the Lord to bear fruit. That's why we are here. Fruit of righteousness and the fruit of holiness and the fruit of the Spirit. And the Lord will make us to bear fruit. 
And everything we need in life, everything we need in life, the Lord will add to us. He'll give that to you also in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and pray to the Lord. That the Lord will help us, will help you, will help me. And the most important thing, bearing fruit, that's what we'll concentrate on. Glorifying God, glorifying God. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we need to bear fruit. The fruits of repentance, the evidence of repentance, the works of repentance, we need to bear that. But if you have not repented, how can you bear the fruits of repentance? Why don't you just tell the Lord, oh Lord, if you are doubting your repentance, if you are doubting your salvation, if you are doubting your attachment to the Lord, if you are doubting your reconciliation with God, Jesus is waiting for you. He is a bridge between God and man. And through him, you can come to God. And whosoever comes to me, he said, I will for no reason cast you away. He will not cast you away when you come. He loves you. Loves you beyond description. You can tell the Lord. If there is condemnation or guilt for any secret sin, private sin, open sin, public sin, don't just say, Satan, get thee behind me. That's not Satan. That's your conscience reminding you that you have not been living a victorious life. You have been living a defeated life, a sinful life. Don't say, Satan, get thee behind me. That's not Satan. That's your conscience. Your conscience is trying to help you. And it's trying to say, why don't you come to Christ at this time of opportunity? Come to Christ at this time of opportunity. Now is that time of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can call upon him. Come, he'll receive you. Just while you're there. You lift your heart to the Lord. You just close your eyes and see him right in front of you. In your mind's eye. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for what I've done. Help me, forgive me, change my life. Bring me, Lord, the planted in the kingdom of God. Make me part of you, Lord, a branch in the vine. Believe and it's done. Believe and it's done. And tell him now to plant his love in you. Hold your hand. You don't want to fall. Tell him to hold your hand. Nobody is strong by himself. Your strength is in Christ. Your strength is in Christ. He is the lover of your soul. If you were the only sinner in the world, he would still have died for you. That's the measure of his love for you. He doesn't want you to perish. Lord, receive me. He will receive you. He will not cast you away. He will not cast you away. He will not cast you away. He's so loving, he's so kind, he's so forgiving. Come, he will receive you. As we have come to Christ.